particular day, we had a lunch practice um, doing some long jump. And this application is really perfect for not just people doing PE, but anyone um, who's interested in taking pictures or so on. You set the frames and how long you want those frames to occur, and it takes a strobe effect of pictures, and you can get the perfect picture that you want of that sunset or of that thing happening. Or in sport, you can scroll through the pictures and see it a skill progress. So the students were using this to assess their own skills um, at lunchtime. Now, I think bear in mind, we've only got one device at our school. Um, we're, as I mentioned earlier, pretty low socioeconomic. We have one iPad for the whole school, and that gets booked around, and, and the kids use that um, pretty effectively for, for lots of different things. So sure, a lot of schools just come over from, um, from Shanghai last month, and there was every kid in the school had an iPad. Um, it was about a thousand kids. So, Big parallel difference, but you can still get the same sort of results. By two o'clock, I'd be to the golf course, um, and this is some video analysis that was happening on a mobile device that the students were doing, um, right there. As soon as the golf swing had happened, they were able to analyze the technique and, and pick up some different things. So all of this is taking place on a phone. Prior to these technologies being done, what would we have had to do? We would have had to leave the place, the actual activity, and we had to go back into a lab, we had to fire computers up, and all that time was wasted. That's not happening anymore. Things can happen immediately, and the learning can take place straight away. By 5 p.m., I've probably checked um, The Age, the newspaper. Um, I've probably been on Facebook, and I've probably played a little bit of my favourite game, Machine Arium, at the moment. That's like a puzzle game that I'm obsessed with. Um, but that's pretty much my day, and, and if, again, if I'm being good, I might have to go at that 100 push-ups application as well. Not all the time, but some time. So there it is, my mobile day, and 21 interactions, probably more, that just happened. You they weren't a phone call at any stage, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I probably did, yeah. Answered text messages, there's probably more times that I, um, you know, but 21 different sort of um, interactions that I had on that particular day that were a part of my day. Now the same thing would happen for a lot of you in this room, I'm sure of it, and for our students I think as well. What made a lot of that possible was the fact that we have access to um, these amazing applications. Now, I, I tend to say apps and people automatically assume iPhone and iPad. Uh, when I say apps, I mean little pieces of software that can run on any mobile device. Um, there's pretty much an equivalent in all the devices However, iPhone gets the most publicity and so on and um, so forth, so we tend to think of that. But in mobile learning, devices are in their thousands. And I'm trying to talk general when I talk about applications and so on. Now, I want to share with you a little story about my, my role as trying to be an app developer. I'm a teacher, obviously, and I've had some really good ideas about apps that I wanted my students to be able to use. Um, and I'm going to tell you how that actually happened to take place. I've got no idea how to do any of this sort of stuff, so hopefully you can get that across. I came to a, a crossroad and I thought, which way do I take, the difficult way or the easy way? I took the difficult way for some strange reason, and this is what it looks like. Uh, it's, this is the programming language that iPhone apps and so on are programmed in. I opened it up and I had no idea what I was doing. I've got a video of that now. <coughs> right, I'm first program uh, for the iPhone, a really good idea, can't be that hard, um, <laughs> create a new Xcode project I guess.
that was how successful I was at it. <laughs> I gave up immediately after that. But the same thing is, I still had all the ideas in my head, and I wanted to make them a reality for the students in our class. And I know that there's probably teachers in here who want things to happen as well. And the point I'm trying to get across is, we can do it now. Absolutely. I thought, there's got to be an easier way, so I got onto the internet, and I thought I'd look at some um, tutorials. Now, a tutorial usually is something that makes sense because it's step by step, but this was a nightmare. I had no idea what I was doing. And this is the classic application. That took me three hours to make that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely no idea. Why? It doesn't do anything. It just says hello world on the screen. So really difficult. I've got a lot of respect for the people that do these things. Um, so I realised that I need to just go back into the classroom and teach. But I wanted to get my ideas back. So I had the choice again. This time I took the really easy route. And I realised that the barrier between a good idea and reality is no longer. Um, if you've got an idea, or your school has an idea, you can make it happen in a number of ways. And I'm going to show you that and how I did happen to, to get my ideas finally done. And I use a website called elance.com. Now, this website is a freelance website that I did as a private person, but schools could definitely do it. I know there are schools that are using something similar to get applications made for their students. Here I am at Port, um, not a very big town. Our school is somewhere in that mix, but there's a thousand people in the town um, and there's definitely no IT industry. You can see that, it's mostly farming land and so on. So I didn't really have anyone that I could go and ask, can you produce this for me? Um, no one really knows how to use a computer, there's no computer technicians. You have gotta travel to Bendigo, which is about an, you know, an hour and 10 minutes away. So how do I get my application made? Well, on the Elance website, I posted my job, and all these people from all over the world started bidding for my job. They had an idea, and they, they thought they could do it. They, they showed me their portfolio. You can see how much they've earned, where they're from, and you can start to, to get a feel for these people bidding for your job. So they're basically fighting for you to accept their, their offer. You don't have to accept them. Sometimes I put up fake jobs just to see what people come back with. But <coughs> on this particular occasion, um, you see I had seven proposals from India, four from North America, one from Eastern Asia, and one from Eastern Europe. Now, eventually, I found some that I liked, and I accepted them. And he was working in Bangladesh, and he had really good English, and we could communicate effectively about what I wanted done. And because of that, um, I actually had to, I paid him a lot less than what it would cost in, in Australia, like a lot less. Um, I got two applications made for $1,000. Now I did that because I was interested in the whole mobile learning approach. And the money that I've made from those apps has come back um, in the form of these two. So these are two apps that I had made for me um, on elance.com. So the point I'm trying to make here is, if you've got an idea, there's no need for you to do it anymore. Global collaboration by Elance, I think that's the best form of global collaboration ever. Um, I had a guy in Bangladesh making my applications a guy in South America who was doing the graphics for those applications, and I was running it in Australia just um, through the Elance system. So both of those together, probably 500 each, well, for, you know, affordable for a school in many ways, um, and maybe affordable for individuals as well. Um, and certainly, I charged them for 99 cents. My students got them for free, um, but I've made back the money within about three months. So the possibilities are there. However, I've also shared this story with a few other teachers. Now this is Linda, she is on, that's her Twitter ID. She had the same idea. She was probably sitting in a room like this and she said, I've got an idea and I wanna make it a reality as well. She used Elance and she come up with some awesome applications for her students. She's an English teacher and she made this application called Writer's Hat, which is basically a story building application where you move through and you pick the story and generate it. And she came up with a um, logbook for her students, particularly her for her son, who always forgot to put down their hours that they did when they were practicing their driving. So she had an idea for herself, put it out there, and now she's generating this income from, um, from the different aspects that have come in, and she's obviously also benefiting our students. So I got back to this road and I thought to myself, 